So at first glance, um, today, today's readings, I, I thought were about how bad wealth and having money can be. But there's so much more to it than that. It isn't bad to make money. The problem is when we make money and we get comfortable, we forget that others around us are struggling. The, book, the prophet Amos tells us that those, those that are comfortable, those who are laid up in their beds of ivory, listening to harpists, drink, they're drinking wine. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds kind of like a good time. <laughs> um, but these, these guys are even anointing themselves just because they can. According to the prophet Amos, these people, these are the first who will be exiled. Because how can they relax when, when, they, when there are people going without? How can we anoint ourselves when our neighbors have no honor? Today in Luke, we hear a story of Lazarus and the rich man. It's important to note that Lazarus is the only poor man named in Jesus' parables. So that gives us the importance of Lazarus. According to the gospel, their lives, according to the, to the gospel, their lives and their lives were different, and their, the differences continued even after the death. Only the roles changed. The rich man died and went to the netherworld, also known as hell, from where he could see Abraham and Lazarus was by his side. Even in death, the rich man wanted to be served by Lazarus. He called out for help. He really had a lot of nerve. I think, uh, he really had a lot of nerve, I think. He went, he went, he wanted Abraham to send Lazarus to his father's house to warn his brothers, which Abraham reminded the rich, of the, the man, the, the, the rich man and the differences between him and Lazarus in life, as well as the differences between them in death. Abraham also tells the rich man that Lazarus will not be going to warn his brothers because if they already have Moses warning him, warning them and they aren't even listening to him, what makes them think that, what do you think they'll say to Lazarus? When is the last time you encountered a Lazarus? How did you react? Oftentimes we might react, out of, we might react out of fear in situations like that. But we have to ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? How, how many of you know some of us went to St. Louis Part of our trip, we had some free time. And during this free time, we visited a basilica. Uh, everything, from top to bottom, was marble mosaics, marble this, gold this. Um, in the 1800s, it cost $100 million to build this, this place, which was beautiful. I'm not gonna deny it, it was beautiful. Um, it cost them $7.7 .7 million, $15 a minute, which turns into $7.7 .7 million worth of electricity that they're spending. A year. So my the whole one time I'm thinking, how many people, poor people could you know could they be serving with this money? How many uh, how like really what could you be doing with this money other than spending it on, on that? Uh, I live on East Riverside, East Riverside Drive, and on my short little commute, I see many people who are much like Lazarus physically. While I'm comfortable interacting with them, I understand that many many people are. not it's those of you who have donated to our social ministry collection, as well as those who bring boxes of toilet trees and even food that I'm able to include in our blessing packages. Those that are blessed with comfortable lives, those who are blessed to live lives that are worry-free, we have a responsibility to our brothers and sisters, a responsibility to lend a helping hand when we can. Today's second reading, a letter, a second reading from the letter to Timothy remind, remind, reminded me of a loaf of bread. Those of you who, who bake know that you know it takes many ingredients to make a loaf of bread. The main ingredient is to make this rice is what? Yeast. Yeast, right? So that's the main ingredient. Um, but the second reading of the letter to, uh, the, the, the second reading today gives us different other ingredients to the bread of life, getting into, into the kingdom of heaven. Things such as pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, gentleness, and to give testimony to the words. These are just a few of the ingredients that it takes to get us into heaven. But as we read today, let us not be caught up in our own lives, that we forget the most important ingredient of all. The yeast of this bread that we're making, let us not forget that our brothers and sisters in need. You don't have to go out and literally feed the homeless. It can be as simple as just being, a, being mindful of those around you, what their needs are. Our time on, our time on earth here is short. But while we are here, we are called to look after one another and to do for one another when we can. Y'all have heard me say that we have to. Y'all have heard me say before that we have to be the hands and hearts of Christ. This week, let us try and be a little more mindful 
of the Lazarus in our life to remember what would Jesus do? 